Uh, it was a win-win-win, but they, uh, for whatever reason, still uh, rejected uh, pursuing that option. Uh, now people are turning off their ADSB, right? Correct. You just tell us how much you want to charge for landings. We'll handle everything, and you'll just get a deposit in the bank. And when you hear about this, it drives, it scares me. When the FAA mandated ADSB, there were a lot of promises of privacy because that was a big concern. Right. How has that played out now? Not according to the promise, Okay. unfortunately. So we're seeing ADSB starting to be abused in different facets. Uh, probably the most attention-grabbing one at the moment is landing fees. Landing uh, fees. Yes. So I'm, I'm located out of Kissimmee. Uh, we passed uh, landing fees that started uh, in February and they're using ADSB to track traffic in and out of the airport and then that information is being forwarded through Vertower to a company called Vector. Uh, Vector is then sending bills directly to the aircraft owner for landing fees at that airport along with uh, a pretty large and growing number of airports across the country. I've been hearing a little bit about that. Now Vector uh, Vector is, is going to airports whether small, medium, whatever and they are they are getting the airports to sign up for their service. Is that how it's working? Correct, correct. Yes, and so what what Vector is basically selling to the airport managers are a turnkey system. You just tell us how much you want to charge for landings, we'll handle everything, and you'll just get a deposit in the bank. And so it's very attractive, obviously, for for the airports. airport managers. Yeah, that are they're trying to you know generate revenue. Um, there's an undue burden on, on pilots, obviously, right? Right. So there's there's no added service, no anything else. All we're getting is we just have to pay more for nothing. Correct. Absolutely. And uh, Vector is also sending those air, those bills to the aircraft owner, not necessarily the pilot. And those bills will show up anywhere from four or six weeks after the actual landing. And so you take a flight school that they have a fleet of aircraft, maybe five aircraft and they're doing five flights a day and then you get the whole month's bill up front. How do you break down who flew what on what days and, and pay? So uh, despite the fact the ADSB is being abused to get this data, it's also placing an undue burden on, on aircraft owners. What are the rules as far as using ADSB for tracking this information? Yeah, that's a great question and I'm not sure I have the answer. I think uh, there's been some activity from AOPA to the FAA on it. As far as I can tell, the FAA has been silent, um, and, and there hasn't been a whole lot around this. And I think it's one of those gray areas that unless there's a prohibition, it's being utilized. But I, I think it's going to come to the point where it has to be challenged and, and a determination from the FAA. Is Vector claiming that they're not using ADSB, that they're just taking pictures of tail numbers, or what's going on there? No, Vector is very clear that they use ADSB data along wow. with cameras on the field. Yeah, and uh, they're they're absolutely unapologetic about it. So, yeah. Well, okay, it wasn't recent. It was a couple of years ago. I'm out of the Dallas Fort Worth area, and uh, I fly a Cessna 210, and I was doing a a, a photo mission, but uh, I was able to do a a low approach at Dallas Love Field. They had nothing going on, no Southwest Airlines flights coming in, and tower was fine. They, they let us come in. We did a low approach, flew over, and um, three, four weeks later, I get a bill for landing at Dallas Love Field. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's a problem. Now, I, I reached out to them, and I said I did not land, and they waived it. Right. But this is an issue. It's a, it's a big issue. And and it leads to bigger problems. Uh, now people are turning off their ADSB, right? Correct. That's my, that's my biggest fear. Every pilot I talk about this with, one of the first reactions is I'll just turn it off. Uh, first, no. It's up there for safety. So many of us are still alive because it's been in place, and I think that's the number yeah. one focus is I mean, safety. Especially with all these mid-air collisions we're seeing and hearing about. Correct. Then the big fear is that pilots are going to start turning off their ADSB. I think that there's a good chance they will. So we need to get pilots to have system or trust back in the system. And, and that's simply it. And so our, we're, we're petitioning the FAA along with some of the, the stuff AOPA has been doing uh, to put safeguards in place so that ADSB is protected for its original purposes and exclusively that. And so we have a petition we've started that we're, we're trying to get pilot signatures on uh, that we'd like to present to the FAA along with key decision makers from Congress and uh, try to get some pressure to make sure our ADSB is kept to its original safety purposes. So you need people to sign a I do. petition. I and do. where's that at? So if you go to the change.org uh, website and look for a uh, call for the FAA to halt the misuse of ADSB, uh, there you'll be able to find the petition there and uh, just sign. And it's, it's, it takes two minutes to just 
fill in your information and, and submit it. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure I do that. I appreciate that. That's crazy. We also have a Facebook group we started, if anyone cares to join us, called ADSB Tracked Billing Has Begun. Uh, and if you go to join, just make sure you put in, you know, your qualifications. Are you a pilot? What are your ratings? Uh, we're mainly doing that to make sure that folks that come in are really genuinely interested in the cause. There have been some folks that have come in and they're not really there to help further our cause. So right. we're just trying to make sure that we're a united group of pilots. There's with the trolls same out there. There are. And, you know, this, uh, we've interviewed people on this show from all over the, the world. And all over the world, there is a problem. I mean, like in the UK, you can't land without shelling out money. You, in Europe, you can't land without. Anywhere in the world, you have to pay to land. Right. And here in the United States, we have freedom to fly. And, At the time. And when you hear about this, it drives, it scares me. Yes. And, um, you know, I know in Texas, there's an airport outside of San Antonio that started using this. And now oh, there is an airport we can't really land at. You know, um, what is the solution? I, I wish Other I... Other than just signing a petition, what can we do? So as uh, pilots, what we're doing is a couple of things. Uh, we use whatever means are at our disposal, right? So the first thing you could do is just not fly those airports. They can't right. charge you for landings you don't make. Um, I would also say the other thing, particularly in Kissimmee, it's interesting. Uh, if you go to ForeFlight and use the comments section, uh, a lot of pilots are using that now oh, to raise awareness. And uh, very interesting read. If you just go to KISM for the airport and go look at the comments, I will. It, yeah. It's self-explanatory. It's it's quite uh, shocking the the comments that are out there and how many. Has has the airport seen a dramatic reduction of flights in? Will um, that help in? changing their mind about using Vector or any other services doing this? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, truth be told, for Kissimmee, we actually went to the city uh, mayor and the city council or the city manager with an even better proposal. We used the same numbers that their airport director had given. We said if you charge $3 instead of 4 or 4 instead of 3 for every 1,000 pounds for landing, but you exempt aircraft 12,500 pounds and below, uh, you actually make about $50,000 a year more revenue, not less. And then instead of um, using Vector as a, a billing agent, why not let the FBOs collect that uh, commission for doing a landing fee, and it's done at the time of the transaction. Uh, it was a win-win-win, but they, uh, for whatever reason, still uh, rejected uh, pursuing that option. But Wow. Yeah, I think so they turned it down with. flat. Correct. So not even considering it. Um, how prevail, uh, prevalent is this problem in the United States? Are we, can you... Like how many airports in Florida? How many? If you do, you know any of those numbers? I don't. I don't know the full numbers, but I know Vector has uh, exposed to us a, on our Facebook group a, a client list. It was around 98 a airports. 98 not, airports. Not all in of the them country. are charging landing fees, um, but there are a good number and a growing number. I keep seeing reports on our Facebook group every week or two. This airport's added. That airport's added, and so forth. I know recently one out of Houston um, jumped on board with with Vector, um, and so it, it is growing and it's growing rapidly. Oh, that's really too bad. Um, who do you know? Who runs Vector? Who owns it? Yeah, there's a the guy that's the the owner and founder is a gentleman named Pete Colton. Okay, uh, I know they're based out of uh, Virginia, up around the. Okay, DC so they area. are U.S. based. At least Correct. it's not you know somebody foreign. Yeah, I've heard I've heard rumors that it's a, a, a foreign owned company, but to my knowledge, it's 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 a U.S. based company. Okay, well, I need to do some research because uh, why why are I mean, obviously they're doing it because they can make free money basically. Yeah. Um, you know, other than setting up a system to be able to monitor ADSB, which is not hard these days, flight aware, everything else online, can, flight radar twenty four, they're all looking at ADSB. Right. This is a really big problem. People are going to start turning off ADSB. Correct, correct. And the other option that a lot of them are saying, I'll just take the bill and throw it in the garbage. Uh, the problem with that is the bill, the Vector is the billing agent, but the bill is coming from the airport, and the airport does have the authority to put a lien on your aircraft. Really? They do, and at least in Florida, they do. Um, and so, you know, the, the whole just throw it in the garbage and never got it may backfire as well. So I think, I think we've got to beat this in, in a sense of policy and be united as a, as a community of pilots. Um, and we've got to keep each other informed. I knew when, when this thing started, I called Vector uh, on the phone. I said, like, a list of all your airports that you, you charge landing fees at. And they said, well, if you sign up and give us your tail number, we'll tell you the airports you go to that we charge at. Oh, no. And I said, are you kidding me? I want the whole list, right? Well, sorry, we can't give you that. And so a friend of mine then called and said, what do I need to do to get the list? They said, well, we need you to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Oh. And so there's, a, there's an overwhelming, you know, like red flag there for me for a lack of transparency. Well, I can, I can see that, that um, businesses can keep that stuff. I, I understand the need for confidential sure. um, deal. But, um, and there's no 
law that says they have to release that information. But yeah. um, I, ju- I think the whole thing is shady, you know. Yeah, it, it, it and is. And unfortunate. And, and, um, it's going to hurt aviation. It, it's already hurting aviation. Uh, you know, we saw the um, the incident up in D.C. with the helicopter and, the, and yeah. the aircraft. The helicopter had his ADSB off. Right. Uh, there was another recent occurrence out in uh, one of the West Coast states. I think it was Nevada where uh, a guy flying a Swift had pulled the ADSB off on his uh, aircraft and was entering a traffic pattern high with a civil air patrol in the pattern. Yeah. Somebody didn't miss or miss the uh, call outs, but the ADSB wasn't there and they collided. Yeah, the lance there. Yeah, yeah, turned into a fatality. Uh, so I think there's a risk of this becoming a growing concern and, you know, landing fees and, and, and the, 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 the crazy rates that they're just continuing to bill out is one thing, but the misuse of ADSB is my, my red flag. It's all about safety and we've got to keep it safe and keep pilots having trust in the system. Okay. All right. So for uh, you pilots out there, go to uh, the, the petition. Let's get that signed. Uh, if you want to find out more, go to the Facebook group, and we'll put the links uh, here and also in the description below. Uh, Don, thank you so much oh, for coming thank on. thank you. I and, really appreciate your and help. letting us know about this. Yeah, this is huge. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget our sponsors. We're here at the Flying Eyes booth. If you go to flyingeyesoptics.com, you can use our discount code taking off, all caps, one word for 10% off. Also, Z Vision, the brightest landing taxi lights out there, xevision.com, Marshall Protective Services, and psprotects.com, 67 Designs, the best camera, tablet mounts for your airplane at 67d.com, clemensinsurance.net. You need the insurance, Jerry and his team will help you get the best rate. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.